Praise God. Let's just praise him with this little song that we've got here. You lift me up, 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 and on eagles we You lift me up, 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 by your spirit in me. You lift me up, 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 so I can see. You lift me up. God and we should praise him let's just praise him let's just praise Jesus tonight thank you Jesus you're so good we love you Lord and we praise you Jesus well you know I thought of this uh, old hymn that we haven't sung for a long time 
And uh, I thought this might be a good song to sing, so let's try this. I was sinking deep in sea, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. When the captain of the sea he heard my despairing cry, and the waters lifted me. Am I Love lifted me Love lifted me When nothing else could help His love lifted me Oh, love lifted me Love lifted me when nothing else could help Love lifted me Was in danger Look above Jesus completely saved He will lift you by His love Out of the angry way He your Savior wants to be Billows his will obey. He your savior wants to be saved today. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing else could help. Oh, love lifted me. me 
Well, I'm so glad for the love of God. We just came through Christmas, and uh, you know, I shared a message last week, three words about Christmas. And the first word is love, because Christmas is all about the love of God. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Oh man, I'll tell you, you know, when, when you feel love, do you remember when you fell in love and all of a sudden how happy you are? Everything seems to be good. Even bad things seem to be good, you know, because you're in love and, and it really doesn't matter. And, and you feel loved and you're, and you're giving love and, and you know, there, there's just something about it that lifts us. And the wonderful thing about the love of God is that it is constant, doesn't depend on our circumstance. He loves us all the time. And he so loved us that he came to this earth so that he could be the perfect sacrifice for our sin so that we could know what it is to be forgiven, cleansed of our sin, and to have a right relationship with God and to know him and walk with him every day and experience his love, be in his love, to be in love with him and to know that he's in love with us and, and to feel that, to be enraptured in that. And you know, uh, love with people kind of wears off. And sometimes, you know, you fall in love with people and then you fall out of love with people. But you know, the wonderful thing about God is he has loved us ever since he created us and has already said he loves us forever and ever and ever. So, you know, this, this love of God is a love that lifts us up. Praise God. Praise God. Well, I wrote a little song about that here a few weeks ago. And uh, I want to introduce it to you tonight. I don't think I sang it yet. And uh, you can sing along with me. Gives 
us alive Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hmm. Well, do you remember that day that you first let Jesus in your heart? Have you done that? Maybe you haven't. And uh, if you haven't, I hope sometime tonight you'll open your heart to Jesus and say, yes, Lord, come into my heart. Lord, I, I want to have the happiest 2024 I've ever had. And I know that begins with letting you into my heart. And making you my Lord and my Savior, my God, my King. And, uh, you know, I just encourage you just to do that. Here's a little song the Lord gave us in 2023. I know some good things happened in 2023 because these songs, that last song and this song, I, the Lord gave them to me in 2023. So these were good things. Amen. <laughs> Creator, 
Praise you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Whew. Wow, it just makes me happy thinking about that. Praise God. Well, I'm going to sing one more song. I'm going to share a few thoughts out of the Bible, how to be happy in 2024. I wrote a little song years ago. All of my world had fallen apart, everything. You ever hear the stories where a person lost everything? That happened to me. Everything. And, uh, man, I'll tell you, it was a hard day. Saying goodbye to the home, packing the car with a few things I had. And as I was getting ready to go, it was kind of a stormy morning in Florida. Kind of looked like this picture. I found this picture. It's not the picture of the day, but one that looked like it. And, uh, I remember uh, I just felt inspired to write this song. Oh, here it goes. Dark skies all around me. No, no where to start Rain falls on my shoulder Don't know what's my heart All I know All 
find your way That you care All I know is You are with me All I know is nothing else we know that he's there and we know that he cares you know sometimes I hear people say well I guess all we can do is pray we don't really realize the best thing we can do is pray because God is the God of the impossible and uh, you know he didn't leave me forsake me he stayed with me and he blessed me with a beautiful wife named Kathleen and we got a wonderful home in Florida and We've been reaching out and ministering to people all over this country and in many different parts of the world. And we're just praising God. You know, God is not finished with you. He's not finished with you. If you're alive, if you're breathing, if you're above ground, God has you here for a purpose and a plan. I remember reading this week, this week in the Bible, Kathleen, about Elijah, the prophet, and uh, how he got into a spell of, of feeling sorry for himself and depression. And you know, God realized that, that Elijah was a little bit worn out and he needed a moment to refresh and renew himself. And he fed him some food that must have been some powerful food because he ran on it for the space of 40 days and got down into a cave and there God met with him. And uh, he basically said, Elijah, Stop feeling sorry for yourself. I'm still in control. And he gave him his next assignment. You know, that's what God wants us to know. He's still with us. And he's still got everything under control. And he's ready to use us again. And he's ready to give you your next assignment. Are you ready to receive it? Are you ready to do what he wants you to do? If you'll do that. The glory of God will be poured out on you and greater things than you have ever seen will happen. The best is yet to come. And I believe that with all of my heart. Well, amen. Well, we've got a, a, a few uh, thoughts to share with you how to be happy in 2024. All right. And you know, we've just come through Christmas and my son gave me, I've never had this before, the little electronic transmitters. You put one on your guitar and one on your amplifier. 
And if I wanted to, I could march around the house and play my guitar. Kathleen probably is not going to be for that very much, but, <laughs> but I could do it if I wanted to. And uh, just the idea that I have that. And, uh, and he left me a, a, a little unit that's a, a guitar uh, processor. And uh, so I'm playing it tonight for the first time. And it really sounds nice. So, uh, you know, Christmas brings a lot of good things. And, uh, but even more than the gifts, just being able to spend time with our kids. We spent time with Kathleen's son and his family and what a good time we had on Christmas day. And then with my family yesterday and this morning. And uh, I mean, it's, you know, it's always good just to be with your family, just to laugh and, and, uh, and to remember. And, uh, but you know, I know there's some people that th they've lost their family, maybe to death or maybe They've lost their family to a change of life and a move, or maybe it's been a divorce, or uh, it could be something else. Uh, I, I talked to one of our friends who, uh, he's, he spent the holiday in a hotel by himself up in Ohio. And, uh, you know, our heart goes out to our, our good friend, and uh, we're just praying for him and asking the Lord to comfort him. I, I, I've been there. I know what that is. I know what it is all of a sudden to be in the holiday and there's nobody around you and you're, you're just all by yourself. And uh, quite honestly, he was one of the guys that in, in the middle of all of that, he reached out and said, come on over and we're gonna have a turkey, come have some turkey with us. Now he's in that situation, he's way up in Ohio, I can't get to him, but I did talk to him today. I, I just want you to pray for him. And uh, the Lord knows who he is, knows his name. But you know, we, we need to know that Wherever we're at in life, God knows where we're at, and he's with us, and he has a plan. And his plan is a really, really good plan. So how to be happy in 2024? You know, the world will say, well, get drunk, you know, just drink your, your life into happiness. But... Uh, you know, I, I think there's all kinds of statistics out there. I don't have to even begin to talk about it. We've all read it. We've seen the documentaries of where drugs and alcohol leads and leads to people losing everything, leads to people uh, wanting to commit suicide. Sadly, many do. Uh, other violent things happen. You know, just here in the, we, we, we live in really a nice, quiet little town in Florida. But there were three stabbing deaths in one day, just two days ago, right here. And they're all within just a few blocks of us. And, you know, that just tells me that, that the holidays can bring out the best and the worst in us. And, uh, and that that's happened here. And, and, you know, in every one of those cases, these are people that, that somehow bought into what the world says. This is how you do it. This is what you need to do to be happy. And it, and it just led to destruction. And, uh, and you know, what we need to do is we really need to focus in our mind on what does God say will bring happiness. And did you know that in the Bible, God gives us the prescription to happiness? He tells us what it's all about. Well, let me just uh, read from the Bible and, and give you three simple points. So if you're going to write down notes, all you got to do is write down three words. And the first word is refrain. How to be happy in 2024? Well, first of all, you have to figure out what not to be a part of, what not to be around. You know, part of being happy in 2024 will be figuring out what you shouldn't eat. Uh, if you're diabetic, you, if you want to be happy in 2024, don't eat a ton of sugar. Isn't that right? I mean, that just kind of makes sense. And, you know, I'm at the age where we think about that. And, uh, and so, you know, I, but, but, you know, I, that's just one illustration. And that could go out there in many other directions. So the whole sentence that I put down, if you want to write it down, is refrain from ungodly influences. Refrain from things that pour an ungodly attitude and spirit into your heart. You got to remember that your heart is a, is a zone 
that is really made for you and God to live in. But if you're not careful, you can open yourself up to things. And the Bible says that there are things we open ourselves up to that gives the devil a foothold into our heart. And he has come to kill and to steal and destroy. He wants to steal your happiness. He wants to destroy you. And he wants to kill you. He just wants you, he wants you dead. That's what he wants. And so if we're not careful, we open ourselves up and give that enemy a foothold. So let's read this in the Bible. I'm in Psalm 1, verse 1. Blessed, fortunate, prosperous, and favored by God is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, following their advice and example, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit down to rest in the seat of the scoffers or ridiculers. Now, I'm reading out of the Amplified Bible. I like this because, you know, these are people who have taken time to uh, amplify the Greek language to us because uh, quite often Greek and Hebrew, and in this case it's Hebrew, uh, they, these words mean many shades of things, you know, and, and there's, a, there's a broader meaning. So he starts out by saying, look, I'm going to tell you how to be happy. Blessed, fortunate, prospered, and favored by God. And, uh, and some many translations translate this word blessed as happy are. So this is saying, here is how you can be happy. Happy is the man who what? He says, well, first of all, you've got to refrain from walking in the counsel of the ungodly. Now, I want you to think about this. Where are you getting your advice? Where is it coming from? Is the advice that you're receiving coming from God and his word, or is it from some source out here that is anti-Christ, anti-God, and, and you're buying in to that advice? If, and here's what the writer's saying. He's saying, if you're going to buy into the counsel and advice of the ungodly, I don't care who they are. I don't care how good looking they are. I don't care how much they're on television. I don't care uh, how many degrees they have behind their name. If they are not a, a follower of Jesus Christ and encouraging you to be a follower of Jesus Christ, then they are the ungodly. And if you walk in their counsel and advice, mark it down, you won't be happy. You cannot be happy walking in the counsel and the advice of the ungodly. And he says also, as happy as the one who does not stand in, in the ways of the sinner, in the sinner's way. What's that talking about? Well, the way is always a, a reference to the lifestyle. So what is the lifestyle of the sinful? Well, you know, we could talk about that for hours and hours and hours. You fill in the blanks. But here's what the Bible says. If you decide to stand with that crowd and, and, and live that lifestyle, be a part of it and identify with it, you cannot be happy. So the first part of happiness is figuring out what you have to refrain from, who you listen to and who you associate with and what kind of activities you associate with. And then number three, refrain from resting in the scoffers and mockers. Uh, he also, they also add the word here, ridiculers. Now, you know, I, I, like a, I like humor like everybody else. Kathleen, you know, I asked her last week to tell jokes at the concert we had at the park. And man, people really love that. And, uh, and she just told one joke after another, clean jokes, but they were funny and hilarious. And, uh, and I, I enjoyed all of that. But you know what? We have uh, comedians who are 
the, the only kind of humor that they can find is by ridiculing, and over and over again, they ridicule God, the Bible, anything that has to do with Christianity. It's just one ridicule after another. And if you find that, that you're resting in that, you know, it, it, isn't it funny? They put them on at 1130 at night so people can turn them on and listen to that humor and then go to sleep with that humor in their head. And it's all this scoffing and ridiculing and, and, and totally uh, coming against the Lord, coming against the Christ, coming against what Jesus did for us and what faith can do for us. And, 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 and then we rest in that. Look at what the Bible says. We're not going to be happy. Uh, we need to be careful what we laugh at and what we take comfort in. You know, a lot of times people, they hear somebody make some fun of somebody and they go, yeah, see, that's the way it is. And then they rest in that like, see, I'm right. And everything, everybody else is wrong. And, you know, and, and I'm, and they kind of rest in that. You know what? If we're going to be happy, the Bible says we need to figure out what those things are and not rest in them, not identify with them, not saddle up to that humor, but instead resist those scoffers and those ridiculers and, and put our faith in the Lord. So the first step to being happy in 2024 is you got to make a decision. And you know, right now is the time where 24, 24 hasn't started yet. So, you know, you got to make the decision before you get there and then start it right away. Refrain, refrain from ungodly influences. Now, look at what the Bible says about this ungodly atmosphere uh, that, that is supposed to be in the last days. And uh, as I read this, maybe you'll, you'll kind of feel like I do. When I read this, I feel like I'm reading about our day today. Listen to what it says. But the Holy Spirit explicitly, this is out of 1 Timothy chapter 4, the Holy Spirit explicitly and unmistakably declares that in latter, later times, some will turn away from the faith. Boy, what is happening today? Look at our nation. The numbers are going down, down, down of people who have faith in Jesus Christ and identify with him. And, and the numbers are going up of people who just say they have no religion or that they're, they're atheists. And those numbers are increasing. The Holy Spirit explicitly, and, and this isn't just in America, this is happening around the world, everywhere in the world explicitly and unmistakably declares that in the later times, some will turn away from the faith, paying attention instead to deceitful and seductive spirits and doctrines of demons. Now, why are people turning away from faith? Why are people turning away from Jesus Christ, from God? The Bible says, because there are demonic spirits that have gotten into our airwaves. They have possessed people who are on our televisions, on our radios, on the internet. And these demons are preaching through those people and, and they're doing it deceitfully. They're not telling the truth, they're telling lies. And isn't it amazing how how often, I, I was watching a program the other night, Kathleen, and they were, they were proclaiming all these things about the church and the development of the church and how nobody even believed Jesus was God until the fourth century. And, uh, and, and they, 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 were, they were saying these things like they were facts and they were ignoring what are the facts. There are facts out there that show us that we have writings we have writings that are that are dated back to about 100 AD. We have the actual fragments and, and manuscript, manuscript fragments that, 
declare to us, some that were in the times when the apostles were still alive, others that were within 100, 150 years, and all of them were declaring that Christianity is what we believe it is today. There were not only fragments of scriptures, but they're uncovering all kinds of archaeological uh, things. Some, sometimes it's a description of Christianity by people who aren't believers, but those people who weren't believers were saying, well, they worship Jesus as God. They said that, and, and, and it was known. It was known way back, 100 AD, it was known. And, and then they come on TV and they just proclaim these things. They know it's not true. These are people who've gone to college. They've seen the evidence. They're lying. And why are they lying? The Bible says there's demons in the world that are seducing people and deceiving people, and they don't care about the truth. They don't care if they lie to you. And, and they're out there filling people with these lies. And as they're filling people with these lies, people are just saying, oh, wow, they went to such and such a college and they have a doctor's degree. They must know what they're talking about. They're lying. They're just lying. They don't know what they're talking about. Or maybe they do know, but they lie anyhow. And, uh, you know, I I'll give you one example. There was a man who, after uh, that film came out uh, about the uh, oh, uh, about the Mona Lisa and all of that that took place in Paris, Da Vinci Code. After that came out, uh, he, he wrote a book and, and people just swallowed what he had to say. And he just, he said things that weren't even true. And then when he was questioned after the fact in a, and in editorial and in footnotes, he said, well, yeah, you know what, that's not the way it really was. And so all these things that he did to sell a book, he later said, well, I didn't tell the truth. But do you think that anybody out here in the world system is retracting that? No, they're playing that show daily on PBS, tearing apart Jesus Christ and Christianity, and the very source that they use has said it's not true, but they keep showing it like it's the truth. Anyhow, what is this? The Bible says, these are deceitful and seductive spirits, doctrines of demons. And the people who listen to it are being misled by the hypocrisy of liars whose consciences are seared as with a branding iron, leaving them incapable of unethical functioning and who forbid marriage and advocate abstaining from certain kinds of food. So this is really what's weird about it. These spirits teach people don't believe in Jesus, don't have faith in God and in Jesus, but they do emphasize a religious lifestyle, abstaining from marriage and abstaining from foods and, and all of these outward religious emblems. And, and look what it says. They forbid marriage and advocate abstaining from certain kinds of food which God has created to be gratefully shared by those who believe and have a clear conscience of the truth. For everything God has created is good and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with gratitude. And of course the context is that we're using it in, in the good way that God created it to be used. For it is sanctified, set apart, dedicated to God by means of the word of God and prayer. So what are those influences? Is it something you're watching on TV? Uh, and, and you know, I'll, I'll tell you what, we have so much available now. We can 24 hours a day fill our mind with these doctrines of demons that are being taught by these seductive spirits? Is it a, are they books that you read? Uh, are, they, are they friends that you hang out with? You know, the Bible says, be careful about what friends you hang out with because bad company will corrupt good morals. You can have, have it all right in your head and you start hanging out with somebody and the next thing you know, they start rubbing off on you and they corrupt you. Be careful who you choose to be your friends in 2024. The music you listen to. You know, I dedicated myself years ago. I'm gonna, if I'm gonna play my guitar and sing, I'm gonna play it and sing 
about Jesus and for Jesus and encourage things about Jesus. And, uh, and you know, I'm not gonna spend my time promoting the world and, and all the things that it promotes. No, I'm gonna do it for Jesus. What about the places that you go? You know, there's places that we can go that are, that are just centers of demonic activity. And we, if we go in those things, we're, we're just exposing ourselves to demonic spirits and activities. And, and I'm not saying there might not be a time to be some place where you go with Christians and you witness, but boy, to go and hang out and enter into that spirit and become a part of it. You don't want to do that. Activities. How about websites that you visit? Boy, and here's a place where if, if I thought I had time, we could start talking about, you know, all of the evil. There, there are evil websites out there that are denigrating women and children and men and, and then promoting a spirit of, of desire and sexual temptation in men and women and drawing them off. Listen, we, we, if we're going to be happy in 2024, we got to make a decision. We're not going to visit those websites. We're not going to be a part of that. And what about the social media? What social media do we identify with? And what, what are we listening to on social media? Uh, how about the church that we go to? Is the church that we go to, is it preaching that the Bible is the word of God? Is it preaching that Jesus is God who died for our sins, rose from the dead? Is it teaching us to follow Jesus with all our heart, soul, mind, and, and uh, might, and, and to live every day for Jesus Christ? You know, if it isn't, if it's some compromised church, and there's, listen, there is a whole church world out here that has basically thrown the Bible away and said the Bible is not a reliable source, and, uh, and it's made up of many, a huge amount of churches, and they've just thrown the Bible away, and they're just going with popular pop culture, pop psychology, pop this, pop that, and, and instead of really standing on the Word of God, teaching people faith, praying people through their difficulties, helping people. They're just, they're just anesthetizing them with the, the ways of the world. And, uh, and you know what? Those churches, I'm, I'm sorry to say, the Bible says they're gonna stand the judgment. We read about them in the book of Revelation. But it doesn't have to be that way for you. There's no happiness there. The happiness, that you can have is not out there in the world. It's not in the, in, the, in the counsel of the ungodly. It's not in the way of the sinner. It's not in the seat of the scornful. Now, so refrain from all those things. Number two, remain in God's word. So refrain, say refrain wherever you're at right now. Just say it out loud. Refrain. And then number two, remain. Everybody say remain. Remain, that's right. So look what he says in Psalms 1. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law, his precepts and teachings, he habitually meditates day and night. And he will be like a tree firmly planted and fed by streams of water, which yield its fruit in its season, its leaf does not wither, and in whatever he does, he prospers and comes to maturity. So here's what we have to do. We have to remain in God's word. In his law, his delight is in the law of the Lord. He's using that as a general term to refer to the word of God, to God's, what God is telling us and, and what God is commanding us and living us the way that God wants us to live. His delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law does he meditate day and night. Now, this word meditate in the Hebrew is actually the picture of a, a cow chewing on its cud. And uh, you know, we all know cows chew it up, swallow it, 
digested, but they have, <coughs> excuse me, more than one stomach. So what do they do after the first stomach does its job? They bring it back up, chew on it some more. Sounds kind of gross, doesn't it? Send it to the next one. And I think there's what, seven stomachs in a cow? And they go through this process. And, uh, and then finally, you know, they pull all the nutrition out of it. And we know it becomes cow patties, you know, after all of that. So uh, that's the picture of meditating. It's the idea of reading the Bible, not just reading, see how fast you can get through it, but to read a scripture and then to really ponder it for a while, think about it, meditate on it, imagine it, try to and pray over it. God, what do you want to say to me out of this scripture? And and study some of the background, get some of the history, look at some, look in the dictionary definitions and read some of the commentaries and really, really pour yourself over it and then come back to it and do that again and then again and again and again that's the idea of meditation it's not this idea of clearing your mind it's it's this idea of filling your mind with God's word it, it's getting God's word into your heart we we used to have a preacher who said you got to get it in your bones. You got to get it in your bones, you know, and uh, and that's really true that, you know, what we got to do is we got to absorb it until it becomes a part of us and it, and it enters into our fiber and into our being. If we want to be happy, he says, look, we need to delight ourselves in God's word and meditate on it day and night, 24 hours a day. Look at it. So this word meditate is hagah, means to moan, growl utter, speak, muse, and, um, and it also has with it the idea to ponder, imagine, uh, even to mourn or to mutter. Uh, you know, there's some things you read in the Bible that make you mourn. You know, I don't know about you. I read about, you know, some of the things that the ungodly are doing to themselves and where they're going to end up. That makes me mourn. And, uh, and then I see some things that speak to me where I've missed God and that makes me mourn you know so we mourn and Jesus said blessed are those who mourn you know so there's a time for us to mourn those things mutter roar speak study talk utter so how can we do that well you know I think that one of the one of the most powerful things that we can do is memorize scripture now you know most verses are only what seven eight ten words maybe 12 words long they're not real long and most of us if we work at it real hard we could memorize the scripture in a day and uh and 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 put that in our file basket maybe go back and review them you know and bring them but get them in our head get them in our heart and think of this if you decided to memorize a scripture a day in 2024, at the end of the year, you would have 365 scripture. It's not leap year, is it? Um, if it's leap year, 364. But you know what I'm trying to say, 365 scriptures that you would have memorized. The Bible says that as a man thinketh, so is he. Proverbs 23, verse 7. As a man thinketh. So if you are thinking all day about scripture, thinking all day about memorizing it, guess what? As a man thinketh, so is he. What you put in your heart is what you will become. It's kind of like eating. You know, they say what you eat as a diet is what you become physically. You know, there, there's a physical chemistry. And the same thing is true spiritually in our soul. As a man thinketh, so is he. So if we spend our day thinking about worldly things, we become a worldly person. But if we spend our day thinking about the Word of God, it will change us from the inside out. So Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 says, If you then have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died and your life is hidden 
with Christ in God. Philippians 4.8 says, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there are any, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. And Romans 12, 2 says, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God. So how do we renew our mind? We meditate on the Word of God, we get the Word of God in our mind, and then th as things come up, we compare what's happening out here and what we're going to think about, that we compare that to the Word of God and we say, I'm going with the Word. This is what the Word says. And you know, if you'll memorize the Word, the Holy Spirit will be faithful to bring those scriptures back to you at the right time and say, look, here's the thing that you should be thinking about. This is what you should be focusing on. So happiness is not a circumstance, but a state of mind produced by God's word. Now listen to this, living in us. Because the Bible, God's word, is not like any other book. It is alive. It is the words that are filled with spirit and life. Listen to what Jesus said, John 6:63. 6, it is the spirit that gives life, quickeneth. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So the very word of God, everything that Jesus has spoken to us, and he, Jesus of the New Testament is Jehovah of the Old Testament. So both the Old Testament and New Testament, we have to properly understand it in its context. But when we properly understand it, it's spirit and life, Old and New Testament. And, and as we pour that into us, we're pouring something that's alive. So it's not, it's not just a word. It's not just a philosophy. It is life, Jesus said. And it's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit anoints that word. The Holy Spirit is on that word. And the Holy Spirit makes that word burn in us. And the Holy Spirit makes that word come alive in us. And when the Holy Spirit makes that word change us and, and produce great things. Jesus said the word of God is the seed that is planted. And we all know that you plant a seed and then you water it because you're believing that it will grow into something and produce something good, a flower or fruit or a shade or, or whatever it is. But you, you plant it for a reason. And, and so in the same way, God's word is that seed put in us. And if we're gonna be happy, listen, he says, if we're gonna be happy, we gotta get the word of God in us. And it'll be that seed and it will start producing fruit in us. John 15, 70 he says, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit. So listen, God wants us to bear much fruit. Jesus says, here's how you do it. Remain in me and let my words remain in you. And the more you remain in Jesus and then keep your heart and your mind focused on him and what he has said in his word and get his word in you and meditate on it and let it fill you and fill you and fill you. He says, that's the way that you will bear much fruit. So Jesus, the Bible says, is the Word. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. And in verse 14 of John 1, it says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, speaking of Jesus. Then so here he is, the God of the Old Testament, Jehovah God, who in, in uh, over and over again uh, in the Targum Scrolls was called the Word of Jehovah, the word of God. And here John says, now who we knew as the word of God in the Old Testament, he has become flesh and we beheld his glory, Jesus Christ. The, the, the Jehovah Yahweh God of the Old Testament is Jesus in the New Testament. And he's the word. 
And, and so he is the word that is implanted in us and the spirit speaks the word into us. And when we meditate on it, it bears fruit in us. Well, what is that fruit? Look at what Galatians 5.22 says. But the fruit of the spirit is love. Woo! Don't you like to feel the love of God? Don't you like to have the love of God? And don't you like being able to just walk in the love of God and give the love of God? And joy, the Bible says, in his presence is fullness of joy. So as we live with the Lord, he fills us with joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. This sounds like a happy person, doesn't it? This is the key. This is how we can have real happiness. It's not in our circumstance. It's in keeping the word of God in us and letting the Holy Spirit do this work inside of us, producing this fruit. So refrain from worldliness, remain in the word of God. And then here's number three, retain your God-given inheritance. Retain it, retain it. You know, it's possible for somebody to have an inheritance and, uh, and the person who, who is leaving it to them dies and they don't attend the reading of the will they don't go down and claim it. They don't go through the legal process of having it transferred to their name. They just leave it a go. And you know, here in the United States, they'll leave it go for just so long and then the state will take it over and turn it over to somebody else or something else. You know, we, we have to retain our God-given inheritance. So look what he says in Psalms 1 verse 4. The wicked are not so. But they are like chaff, which the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. God wants to give all of that to them, but they won't be, put their faith in Jesus. They won't believe and they won't receive it. It's there for them if they would receive it, but they don't receive it. They don't want it. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. So we have to know the enemy is going to try to steal your inheritance. And you know how he does that? He tries to steal the word out of your heart. Do you remember what, how, he, how he got it away from Adam and Eve? He, he met with Eve and, and what did he say? He said, now is that what God really said? And then he misquoted God's word to Eve. And Eve didn't know God's word well enough that she got confused and started thinking, this serpent is right. And, and she listened to it. She got influenced by it. And we know that didn't end in happiness. That ended in a lot of, of increased pain and, and difficulty that she brought not only on herself, but on her whole family. We're all still experiencing that. Listen. The enemy wants to steal the word of God out of your heart. So you got to fight to keep it in there. And, and the Bible says he's seeking whom he can devour. First Peter five, verse eight, like a, like a roaring lion, he prowls around seeking someone to devour. So what are we supposed to do? Resist him standing firm in your faith and in the knowledge that your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of suffering. So Peter says, look, the enemy is going to try to steal it out, but you need to be aware that he's out there. And when you see he's out there, resist. And James says, if you resist the devil, he will flee from you. So sometimes we just got to stand up and fight for it. Fight in the name of Jesus. Not, we're not fighting people. We have to fight demons. We have to fight demon spirits. We have to fight fallen angels. We have to fight Satan himself and just stand against those forces and say, in Jesus name, I come against you. I resist you. I bind you. I pull you down. Ephesians 6, 17 says that the word of God is the sword of the spirit. So we're back to the word. Why do we need to meditate on the word? Why do we need to memorize it? So when we're in the battle, the, the word is there in our heart for the spirit to 
pick up and help us to resist the enemy and to fight against the enemy so the enemy can't misquote it to us and get us all confused. The word is the sword of the spirit. It's alive, the Bible says, living in Hebrews 4, 12, and sharper than any two-edged sword. Why is that? Well, listen, think about that. In a battle, a two-edged sword, they could, they could stick it in somebody. I know this sounds gross, but this, was, this is the picture. They could stick it in somebody and, 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 you know, kind of rip them apart upside. But if they're still alive and kicking, they can come back down the other way and finish them off. It's a two-edged sword. And you need to know something. You, the first time you resist the devil, he doesn't flee. So you have, you're going you're gonna to smack him and say, in Jesus' name, leave me alone. And he's going to come back from another direction. So why do you need a two-edged sword? Because you need to be ready to come back on the other side and say, get out of here. Here's another scripture. Leave me. I resist you. You don't savor the things that be a God. I, I want to do God's will. And if you'll do that and stand in the Lord and start claiming what God has for you, glory to God, the power of God will come on your life and the Holy Spirit will produce the fruit of your spirit, of the spirit in you. And you'll have love and joy and peace and happiness in the Lord. So we got to possess what is ours in Christ. Know what it is. Claim it. Fight for it. 2 Corinthians 12, 3 says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. We are destroying speculations and every lofty thing raised up against the knowledge of God. And we are taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. And we are ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is complete. So the word of God is there to give us what we need to defend our minds against the onslaught of the enemy and to help other people in the same way by sharing those scriptures, praying over them and praying with them and, and binding the powers of darkness, resisting the devil. We need to say to the devil, you can't have my righteousness in Christ. We need to say to the devil, you can't have my kids and grandkids because the Bible says if we train up a child in the way of the Lord, when they are old, they'll not depart therefrom. It doesn't, you know, from what I read in the Hebrew, old might mean old, old. And, uh, and yet the, the Lord will win out. You can't have my love of the spirit for God and people. Well, that's what we need to say to the devil when we're feeling angry and ready to ready to respond with bitterness instead of the love of God. We need to say, Satan, get out of here. You can't have my love of the spirit. I don't receive your anger and bitterness and stand against him in Jesus name. You can't have my joy in the presence of the Lord. You can't have my sound mind, my power, my love and the Holy Spirit. You can't have my peace with God, of God, and working in me for others by the power of God. You can't have that. And so we have to take our stand, the Bible says, and then withstand, and then having done all, stand. And when we do that, and we do it in the Word of God, with the Word of God, with the sword of the Spirit, oh, hallelujah, Demons flee, the devil has to let go. And in its place, the power of God, hallelujah, the Holy Spirit fills us. So refrain from worldliness, remain in God's word, and retain your God-given inheritance in 2024. If you'll do that, you can be happy in the Lord. So I encourage you to do that. Praise God. Lord, I pray for people right now as we move into a, a new year of 2024. And I ask, oh God, that you pour your spirit out on those who are listening to this message. Maybe someone who's had a sad and lonely season. 
that just needs to know that you're there and with them. Encourage them, let them know, nudge them like you did Paul when he was in the prison and you said, I'm standing with you, Paul. Nudge them and let them know you're there with them and you're standing with them. And Lord, help us, God, to really pour ourselves into your word. Help me to do that in 2024, more than ever before. Help us to memorize scripture. Help us to know it. Lord, help us to, to, to see the things of the world that will make us unhappy and to refrain from those things. And help us, Lord, to really get into your word and get closer to you. And help us, Lord, to claim and retain those things that you have promised belong to us. Love, joy, and peace, Lord. Righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Spirit. God, we just pray, Lord, that you just help us really just to clothe ourselves into that, in that, and to walk in that, and flow in that all in 2024. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, people all around us need you, Lord. When I think of three stabbing deaths within blocks of where we live this week, Lord, I think, oh God, people need you. Help us, Lord. Help us to get in front of them. Help us to share with them. Help us, Lord, to head them off before they get to those desperate moments. Help us, Lord, to share Jesus. Help them, Lord, to receive you, put their faith in you, and to know the joy of the Lord, which is their strength. Lord, we're believing for 2024 to be blessed of you as we walk in you, walk in your word and in the power of your might. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen and amen. Wow, God is so good, isn't he? Mm, so good. Well, we're going to sing one more song. a little song that uh, some friends of ours wrote way back when we first gave our lives to Jesus 1970 it goes way back there and a great little song for us to end this year and start the new year
Well, God bless you. Thank you for joining in this concert and this time of Bible study, how you can be happy in 2024. And we do, we do, we pray you have a happy new year. And I believe with all of my heart, if you can put to work what we've talked about tonight, that your new year, if you, I'm not promising that everything will go the way you want it to in 2024, but you'll be happy no matter what happens. What, whatever happens, you'll be happy in Jesus. God bless you. Have a great evening. And uh, we'll be back sharing next Saturday night. So join with us right here at Light for Life Ministries.